let's talk about why you should actually sweat more often. Did you realize that we spend over $75 billion a year just to block sweat? For some reason, people don't like to sweat. They don't like the smell. And above all, don't let anyone know that you actually sweat. Now, sweat itself doesn't have a bad odor. It's the bacteria that ferment certain things in the sweat that produce various types of odor. And a lot of times when you're using certain deodorants that plug up your pores, that sweat material gets blocked and it ferments more and it can create a worse odor. But there are two types of sweat glands. You have certain glands that produce an oil that is connected with a hair follicle, like underneath your armpit. And then you have other sweat glands that produce more of a, a salty uh, fluid. But the overall purpose of sweat is your body's strategy to control temperature, to dump heat so you can keep moving and you prevent heat stroke. It's a survival strategy and we can lose a lot of sweat. In fact, we can lose between two and four liters of sweat every single hour. That's an incredible amount of fluid coming out of our body. And when people are in fear or under major stress when they're sweating, it has a completely different odor. Now, if we look at the consistency of sweat, what's in it, you have 0.9 grams. It's like almost one gram per liter of sodium. So there's a lot of sodium. And if we look at potassium, it's only 0.2 grams per liter. And then if we look at calcium, it's even less, 0.015 grams per liter. And then magnesium is 0.013 grams per liter. And then there's a lot of other things in, in sweat. You have chloride, you have fatty acids, you have even glucose proteins. So sweat is really the same chemistry as the fluid that you have in your blood minus the red blood cells and the fluid that is in between your cells and the capillaries. Okay. So it's a salty fluid. And in your sweat glands, you even actually recycle some of these minerals as well. But this is what you need to know. An average person consumes about 3,300 milligrams of sodium every single day, okay? And they consume about 2,600 milligrams of potassium every day. Now, if we compare this to what our bodies really need, okay, let's just take sodium, for example. So an average person actually needs less than th what they're getting. They need about 2,300 milligrams, okay? And they're getting 3,300 milligrams. So they're basically getting an extra 1,000 milligrams of sodium every single day. Now, with potassium, they need 4,700, which is a lot more than what they actually get. So an average person is in the negative with potassium um, by 2,100 milligrams. And only 5% of the population even gets 4,700 milligrams of potassium every single day. So the ratios are just way more important than these individual numbers. So for example, if you're not getting enough potassium, well, just make sure you don't consume a lot of sodium. But if you consume more sodium, make sure that you're getting a lot more potassium, at least twice as much or even three times as much potassium as the sodium. Now, there's all sorts of studies on this, and I will put those links down below, but especially for the cardiovascular system, you need these ratios to be correct. And this is the exact reason I came up with my electrolyte powder. Very heavy in the potassium, low on the sodium to help correct this imbalance. Now, here's some benefits of sweating, okay? Number one, you're going to balance out your sodium to potassium ratios because an average person, like I said, is heavy on the sodium and the low on the potassium. So when they're sweating, they're gonna be losing much more sodium than potassium. So just by sweating, you can correct this imbalance right here and support a healthy cardiovascular system. All right, number two, you can release certain toxins, the ones that are in your blood. Just realize that you're gonna be also losing the good stuff as well, but you will release some toxins if they're in your blood. Number three, you're gonna sleep better. People notice when they sweat, especially when they exercise, they sleep better that night. Now, it could be the exercise that helps them sleep, but just the fact that you're balancing these ratios right here, are going to help the cardiovascular system. You'll breathe better, you'll have better circulation, and you will sleep better. All right, number four, more energy. Now, this really depends because if you get more sleep, you're gonna have more energy, right? If you have an imbalance of sodium and potassium, okay, and you balance that out, you're gonna have more energy. But if you're losing too many electrolytes, especially sodium, okay, 
you're gonna feel fatigue. So when you sweat and you don't replace the sodium, you may have more fatigue. However, this all depends on the quantity of exercise and if you're replacing your electrolytes at the same time. Number five, it can actually increase your circulation and prevent overheating. Now, just think about this. As you're sweating, you're pushing out certain fluids, right? It's very, very good for your skin. It's good for circulation because we're pushing things out and hopefully you're taking things back in versus inactivity, no sweating, when your fluids are not circulating through the body, they're stagnant and you're gonna get less circulation. All right, number six, sweating creates a hormetic effect. What does that mean? It means that it creates a certain stress that causes your body to adapt and actually become stronger, especially for the neurons in your brain. And there's one study that I found that I'll put the link down below that shows that sweating actually helps to maintain your brain cells, which is pretty interesting. And number seven, okay, the support of your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands have a huge control over sodium and potassium. And if you have an imbalance and you sweat, you can put these two minerals back into balance and support the adrenals. Now, of course, this is also conditional because if you're losing too much sodium or even losing too much potassium, that can negatively affect your adrenals. But usually the fact that when someone sweats, they're usually exercising and exercise does support the adrenals as long as you recover. But yesterday I cut the lawn and it was hot outside and I sweat like a pig and the sweat was just coming out of my body. It was getting in my eyes, it was salty. And uh, I came inside, I took a shower and boy, did I feel better the rest of the day and I slept great that night. Now, I think the best next video for you to watch would be the one on exercise, the unique benefits of exercise. Check it out, I put it right here.